So guys, today the weather is quite nice. It just rained this morning, so it's cloudy, it's not super hot. And that means I can do a lot of walking around the farm. And so in today's video, I'm going to attempt to show you guys around our 400 acre farm. So that means I'm going to do a lot of walking because I want to do it while walking. That way I don't miss out on anything. That's quite some walking I'm going to have to do. You can imagine walking around 400 acres. But come on, let's go. Let's start it out. Now I'm really sorry there is a generator in the background so that's going to create quite some noise but I won't stay here for long. So I'm going to start at what is the most central location on the farm and this is the area. I'll start with this area. This area is our store or workshop. It's where we keep all the tools, everything that we need to use while working inside the farm is really kept here. Right here you can see that we have some tractors and this is where we keep the tractors it's why we repair the tractors from anything that needs any repair will be kept right here. Over there you guys can see we have a house in the background. That house is what would be called like the main or central house, you know. It's where we stay. Uh, it's really the central place the, where the offices are. If someone comes and they need to talk to me or someone else on the farm, that's the spot. Then right here, as you guys might see, uh, or as you might already know, this is where we keep our local chickens together with the dual purpose chickens. So we have two houses of the chickens inside here. This is probably around, you know, three acres in here. Th between three and four acres right inside here. So this is how we keep our local chickens. They are probably around 60 or 70 in number. And our Dioapas chickens. The whole place is fenced and we have a gate right on here. And only specific people are allowed to enter here. Probably around four people or five people. Nothing more than that because we want to prevent, you know, infection and cross infection. <laughs> And then right here, not so far away, is where we have our parent stock. This is where we are growing. It's where we did brood our parent stock. And you guys are now familiar with this structure. It's where we did brood our parent stock. They are currently 13 weeks old. And as you can see, I have a friend over here who is moving the feeds in. Now, these are feeds for tomorrow. They are not for today, so we are just getting ready for tomorrow. But this is the structure. Quite a massive one. I don't know if I would call it massive. But yeah, it's, it's quite big because... It's able to take up all our 3,500 birds, which is a really, really good thing. Right here, we have our corral. You know, all these are just entrances. Like you can see, this is the chicken house over here. And then when you just turn to the side, we have the corral where we keep our cattle. So the corral is currently quite empty because the cattle are out, the cattle are out grazing and because it's been raining, this place is super muddy, like super muddy. If I stepped in here, my boots would sink a little bit. And that is what happens in all places where cattle stay, you know. Uh, it, it's kind of inevitable, you can't do a lot about it. So this is where the cattle stay and it's all fenced in using a certain wire fence. It's probably not in the very best location or maybe the chicken house is not in the best location because it's quite close to the cattle but we already had this structure present before we extended the structure and at that time we didn't have the time and money to quickly you know build in a far away place so it was easier for us to adapt this place and bring the chickens inside here so that's why the chickens are very very close to the cattle not the best thing uh, setting out but we'll probably correct it later on so as you guys might see, we actually have a fence over here that we've built. And the purpose of this fence is that we want to expand the goat shed, which is actually right here. Yeah. So everything is in quite close proximity. We probably have a space of, you guys can see the two spaces. That's the chicken house and this is the goat shed. This is probably around 10-15 meters in between to ensure that the goats don't get close to the chickens. But yeah, this is the goat shed over here. And again, 
same story just like the cattle shed when it rains it gets really really messy inside here so you guys might see it's quite messy here and what happens is that when it rains the goats and the sheep never like to be inside the mess so you'll see a lot of them under that shed over there that's why we want to expand the shed of the goats and move it to cover this entire space you know we want to build a really really big pen a way bigger pen so that's going to be the plan to try to expand it and move it to this place that way we have more space to deal with the goats and guys it also happens to be just about the time when the goats are got out of their house to go and graze it's close to midday so my colleague over there in the background is actually separating the little kids and putting them in a smaller room so that they don't move out because they really can't graze they don't eat grass and just after a little walking they are tired and they want to sleep so you could end up leaving them in the bushes so we keep them in here then the older goats are going to move out so he's separating them and then we're going to let the older goats out so they go and graze <laughs> And again, right next to the central house over here, we have the generator room and the spray room. This is where we keep the generator that helps us run a lot on the farm. And then the pump that we use for spraying the cattle, the goats, and the sheep. It's, it runs on fuel, you know, diesel. And so you can see this is the crash over here where the cattle assemble in there and then they run through the spray. We do spray the animals the cattle once every week and then the goats and sheep uh, once every other week and then moving away from the central section of the farm meanwhile the sun is starting to come out i hope it won't really get very bright but where we are you can see that we have a few houses these are residences for some of the farm workers you can see them they have been built for quite some time they are quite old we have latrines over there in the background and then over here we have a small store something like a store so we have our beehives that have been made but haven't yet put been put up stored in here we have leftover maize seeds from the previous season that we haven't planted i really think those ones are spoiled i honestly don't think they can be planted we tried to plant some of them like i showed you guys in our video but the results are not the best most of not not all of them are germinating so that's really terrible but we have them stored inside this store and this is where we were keeping the baby chickens before before we built the chicken house over there in the background before we build that chicken house that's why we we're raising the baby chickens so now that there is a house for them there was no need for them being in there and now entering this section the things change a little bit we kind of move away from the animals and this is a no-go area for the animals because we have crops so right in this area as you guys might say we have a banana plantation here we have yellow bananas and then we have matoke which is for eating you know i think some people call it plantain but for us it's matoke it's a little bit different from plantain because plantain is a bit hard 
This is matoke, you know, a delicacy for us Ugandans. Together with the yellow small bananas, here for us in Uganda we call them ndizi. Super tasty, really, really tasty. And in this garden, you guys might not notice, but we've actually planted beans. So we have beans planted all throughout this area where the matoke is. If I can estimate, it's probably between two and three acres. And here inside the banana plantation is also a citrus fruit. Guys, these are oranges. So we have oranges here and we also have some lemon trees scattered right inside the plantation so when the season is right we do eat some you know oranges and um, lemon from these trees trying to live a healthy life also you can see that we have a purple tree over here so we do collect some purples this is a really tall purple tree and then we have smaller purple trees like you know this is a really small purple tree but it does have purples you can see it does have purples, so these ones can be picked and eaten. Then over here is what is meant to be a greenhouse. But as you can see, it's not complete. The cover didn't run the entire length. It was way shorter than what we wanted. The material is quite expensive. So we just did it halfway. Hopefully it will be finished. But inside there are some crops that are growing. So we've got tomatoes growing in there. And another crop that I'm really not certain of what it is. But it's certainly a vegetable. You know, vegetables are so many and crazy. So we have tomatoes growing in here. The idea is that we want to be as self-sufficient as possible. Here we have a jackfruit tree. This is a jackfruit, guys. It's not yet ready. And this is my favorite fruit of all time. Oh my God, it's so sweet. It's like the best thing that God ever created. Really sweet and tasty. But this is what the tree looks like. And we've got a jackfruit over there in the background. You guys might not see it, but it's ready for eating. So. After I've recorded the video, I'll go and treat myself to this beautiful fruit. And then when I stand in this point, which is more like the central section of the gardens, there's quite a lot that I can see that has been grown. I see we have cabbage right here. You guys can see the cabbage. Right there in the background, there is spinach. There's more spinach over there in the background, in the distance. You guys can see the huge chicken bun over there, you know, quite huge. I think you can see its roof. It's very bright, so it might not be clear. And then right here, I can see, what is this? Kale? No, 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 it's watermelon. Watermelon right here, they are still quite young and small. So the leaves can be quite hard to differentiate. So this whole area has watermelon over here. Then here we have eggplants that were planted here. We have kale in the background over there. We have tomatoes the other side. Uh, we have green pepper that were in the background. And right in the background over there, we have a banana plantation and then a younger banana plantation right there in the background. And then this area that has been cultivated, you see the nice, huge, clean area? That's actually beans that have been grown there. Probably around four or five acres of beans because we don't want to buy beans anymore, you know, or food for anyone on the farm. Uh, and then I can see some onions over there in the background. So there's quite a huge number of crops that are being grown here. Oh, and guys, there's also red pepper. Yeah, I love red pepper. So there's red pepper right there in the background. So quite a huge number of plants to keep us healthy. And then moving away from the greenhouse, section we find this huge massive expansive area that's actually got almost nothing besides what you're seeing grass so this is expansive it's quite a huge number of acres probably a hundred or more that moves to all these directions well this is actually a boundary this is a fence and there's a family that lives on the other side but all this entire area has nothing to be shown besides the grass and besides the fruit trees over here, you can see, this is a jackfruit tree. I just showed you guys what jackfruit is and also some fruit. So this is a jackfruit tree over here. In the background right there, I can see some mango trees. You can see the huge tree in the distance, yeah, with, with green leaves, not this dry one. No, the other one, that's a mango tree. There's another mango tree right here. So we've got lots of fruit trees right here. So I'll walk through this until I can find the road which is probably in around, you know, 300 meters. <laughs> yeah, so it's quite a huge amount of space that allows us to graze the cows without any worries, you know. We have over 150 heads of cattle, almost 150 heads of cattle. So it's quite a huge number of animals. And then we have very many goats and sheep, around 500 if you put the goats and the sheep together. So that's quite extensive and all that needs pasture to graze. And while I walk my 300 meters, I remember something. Um, in my videos, you guys keep asking, 
Hey, where is your farm? We want to come and visit your farm. When will the farm be open to public visits? And guys, I'm quite hesitant about visits on the farm. It's not that I want to keep the farm hidden or I don't want to show you guys where the farm is, but it's because of the animals that we have on the farm. You see, most of you guys who actually want to come and visit the farm are as passionate about animals as I am. And that means that many of you actually have interaction with these animals. You've had interaction with chickens, you've had interaction with goats and sheep, with cattle. And that puts my farm at risk when you're coming to visit the farm. I know I can try to put, you know, measures to ensure that there is as little disease spread as possible, but it can be quite difficult. So I'm quite hesitant with that until I'm sure I have established perfect biosecurity measures that will ensure that the farm is safe because for example we've got parent stock the parent stock is really expensive we want to be able to you know supply the old chicks and everything but that cannot be done um, when I've got lots of people coming in people coming to visit it's very easy to spread those diseases so for that reason for now I'll put away letting visitors onto the farm and I'll do my very best to show you guys and give you guys as much information as possible through the YouTube channel, through FarmUp. So if you haven't subscribed to FarmUp, come on, what are you waiting for? Just hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell. You won't miss out on an upload. You'll enjoy as much as possible. My goal is going to be to give you guys as much information as possible. So I've finally reached the road. It's quite a distance, guys. So. It's quite a distance that side. I honestly won't try to walk it because it's useless. You know, all you're going to find that side is a fence. Like I told you guys, from the main house, which is actually this side, to the main gate, which is that side, is around 1.1 kilometers. And that's only half the farm. So the farm has a diameter. Well, that's not accurate. But along its length, it's probably around two kilometers or something like that. And along its width, it should be about a kilometer. So it's quite a huge farm. So um, we have goats. The goats are feeding that side. I just saw them. And we have water running along this entire length of the paddock. You know, the water runs for around 800 meters. And the purpose of the water is to make sure that the cattle always have water when they are grazing. So we put buckets just like this bucket that you guys are seeing over here yeah so this is a bucket and this is a tap if i open it you can see the water flowing yeah so uh, if the cattle are grazing from here they'll just come and drink their water from in here this is really really useful and it helps us save on having to move the cattle back to the main area really really helpful and the water is actually good enough for drinking you know it's underground water it's borehole water so it's not contaminated so in case you're moving around like i am right now and you're so, you're thirsty there's nothing wrong with you drinking some of it you know just wash my hand and probably use my hand as a cup That was really relieving. And then guys, moving in the opposite direction of the farm, you can see this over here is the cow shed. I'm using my tripod to point. <laughs> well, I have only two hands. So this is the cow shed, as I had shown you guys. It's more of in the central area. And over here is a paddock where we graze the calves from. So you guys can see the calves over there in the background, you know. They just seated down. They have been eating the entire morning and part of the afternoon. So I think now they are trying to rest a little bit. They have a big saucepan over there in the middle, which has their water. And then right here is a huge container. It's 40 feet that has actually just been acquired. We're going to be using it to store a lot of the seed, the maize seed, you know, the things that we are growing and that we don't want the rats and everyone to attack. They're going to be stored in here. So it's temporarily been placed here before we can build a good place where we can place it and, you know, a permanent location. In the background here, you guys can see the huge chicken barn. Yeah, it's still being built. It's still being worked on. It's in this area. It's a paddock. This previously was also a grazing paddock for cattle. So you guys know that farm work is really slow work. You know, you need to be patient with everything that's being done. So right here, you can see, you know, it, it looks really good. Like, guys, I'm really pleased with actually what's happening. The mesh, the wire mesh has already been placed on the top floor. And there are a few guys working over there to put it on the floor, which is down, to enclose it in 
completely so that you know we have nothing coming in so this is the chicken area we're going to put up another structure right here 30 meters from the other one we shall put up another one right here so that's the work that's going on currently and this is the poultry unit Woo! this i think excites me the most and then here guys is another huge field of maize it's probably over 20 30 acres and all of it has been planted with maize all that is supposed to feed our chickens so you guys can see it in the background you can see it in the distance and yeah like i shared in one of our previous videos we decided to keep all the trees in here of course it makes the planting quite hard in that it's quite hard to use the machinery but these trees looked really valuable we didn't want to cut them down so for this exact particular area we decided to keep the trees and the trees have actually been of use in some of the trees we actually put up beehives uh, because we want to capture the beehives from the wild we don't want to buy any beehives so we place the beehives in here and we've actually got them moving in so this area is working as a region for planting both maize and bees living in the wild is really interesting guys so while i was approaching this area i saw a really huge family of monkeys and i saw them they disappeared into the forest so this is our tick tree forest it's actually quite a huge forest you guys can see it yeah it covers probably around you know 10 to 20 acres of just tick trees and while the monkeys were running away i think they weren't trying to hunt a bird and they failed to hunt the bird. The bird ran away and it ran for its life. And just after I saw that, I looked this side and I saw a cob. A cob. A cob is an antelope. Some kind of antelope. It was also disappearing into the background. I think because it had seen me. Anyway, that aside, this our tick tree forest actually has our beehives, as I've shared with you guys before. In the background, you can see the apiary we are trying to form. We have around 24 beehives set up at the moment. We want to first do around 105, then depending on the results, we can expand to maybe 500, 1000, whatever the potential is. The idea is that if we've got 100 and they start bringing in some money, we can use that money to use it to expand and have to get to about 5000 or more. You know, whatever potential or whatever we can manage, we shall be able to do. That's the beauty about farming. So this is a really huge forest and like I've already told you guys, yeah, there's lots and lots of bees in here and I don't want them to attack me. So let me get out super quick. And guys, I'm so tired. I've been walking for over an hour on the very huge farm. So I honestly won't walk anymore. I'll stand right here and I'll show you the rest of the farm. Thankfully, it has come to an end. So you can see that Again, in the background is the tick tree forest. And this area is a paddock that had been plowed. We wanted to plow this entire paddock up to where you see the green area right there at the end. It might be hard for you guys to see, but we have, you know, another shrub stroke forest. In there, we have lots and lots of wild animals. There's wild pigs. We have, you know, all kinds of antelopes in there. You'll find snakes and everything if you move in there. But this area has been plowed and it has actually been planted with maize too. So you can see it's actually quite a huge area. This is probably around, I don't know, maybe 30 acres of maize that have been planted. And so what happened is that the plan was to plant this entire paddock, which would probably have been around 50, 60 acres. But because the rains came before we plowed the entire place, we decided to just stop and plant what we can manage. Uh, having learned from the previous experience. So this area of the farm, the lower section of the farm is probably around 100, 150 acres in this direction. And I honestly won't move into all of it. I know a lot of that area is now soaked up with water because it has been raining the past few days and it gets waterlogged. So I'll not move there because I'm really, really tired. But yeah, guys, that's the farm. Um, Farm work is really about, you know, learning, learning, learning the area that you're in, learning what to do and learning what's needed for the area that you're in, uh, getting to understand the weather patterns, getting to understand the soils, getting to understand, you know, how the plants interact with the animals, getting to understand the people you're working with, getting to understand the market. So the thing with the farm is that it doesn't become a success over one day. No, that's impossible. You have to be patient. You have to do it slowly and then you'll become successful. So you guys have seen it all around. I'll try to share as much of the farm as possible, yeah? Considering I'm not letting people visit the farm currently. Thanks for watching, guys. Lots of love. Bye-bye.